I got a comment in one of our videos asking what we should expect in the American economy and job market in this election year. And in this video, we will get deeper into this question. Because elections in the US, they don't only influence Americans, but they also influence people all over the world. So let's get into it. This year, the US will be in full election mode. It's a big deal that is about to shake up the economy. But the question is, which way will it swing? So now we are in times of Bidenomics, named after President Joe Biden. This is a concept that refers to the current U.S. policy and economy. Now, to understand what to expect from the upcoming elections, let's take a quick recap and analyze the previous years. During the last presidential campaign in 2020, Biden's team focused on big issues every American knows about. The whole strategy was built around improving life for the middle and low income class. The key focus areas were better health care, infrastructure investments, reducing inflation, tax reforms, and post-pandemic economic recovery. If you look at these points, you understand that it was a great focus for the campaign because it was something that every American wanted to improve. Take health care. It is always a hot topic in the U.S., especially when it comes to costs. Did you know that the average American spends up to $13,000 a year on health care? That's double what Canadians pay. And it's not because of poor health. Nope, it's because of sky high prices. We see that people in the U.S. use a similar amount of health care to people in other wealthy and large countries, um, but we pay more for each interaction. No wonder that promises to cut health care costs get big support. So again, we can expect health care to be a major promise in winning a voter's heart this year. Another point Joe Biden promised to target was infrastructure. Did you know that the public infrastructure investment in the American GDP decreased by over 40% since the 1960s? The U.S. is the world's top economy, but it ranks only 13 in infrastructure quality. Surprising, right? We used to be the leader in airports. We'd have the most beautiful airports. Now we're like a third world country. And it's not just airports. Over 45,000 bridges and every fifth mile of U.S. roads are in poor condition. And water? Millions are still getting it through lead pipes, despite the known health risks of lead. So infrastructure was a big part of the last campaign. Another big promise from Biden's team was reducing inflation. It is crucial in every electoral campaign anywhere in the world. Rent has gone up month after month. Food prices are still high. What's next on the promise list? Tax reforms. Many understand the system needs some restructuring. It becomes especially clear when the richest Americans pay less taxes than any ordinary person. Right now, Warren Buffett pays a lower tax rate than his secretary. So tax reforms were another big promise. And of course, we can't forget the post-pandemic recovery as one of the key points of Biden's campaign. The whole strategy was very encouraging, and the U.S. chose its president. But here we are, four years later. Are Americans still enthusiastic about Bidenomics? What's the word on the street about current economic policies? Here's something shocking. Four in ten Americans feel they're worse off financially since Biden took office. Today, only 30% say they're satisfied with the economic direction. It is quite a modern number, showing a shift in public mood. And the Consumer Sentiment Index is dropping from 101% in 2020 to just 69% now. This is an indicator of how optimistic people feel about their financial future. Why do we see this shift from optimism to uncertainty? It boils down to one thing, prices. Inflation has been on the rise for years, and it is a major worry. That's where Bidenomics faces the toughest critiques. Now that we've recapped the current situation and what happened during the previous election, let's move on to 2024. What can we expect? To get the full picture, we'll look at potential changes in employment, the stock market, real estate, taxes, and the overall economy. First off, the labor market. What's coming in the near future? One of the biggest achievements of Bidenomics is dropping unemployment to 3.8%, a record low unseen in decades. 
but non-farm employment is on a downward trend. And a non-farm employment is basically most of the ordinary job. It excludes military, nonprofit, farming, and a couple of other groups. Now we see fewer open jobs, and this is likely to keep up for the rest of 2024. The main reason for that is that most businesses are still coming back to normal after the pandemic. Many are cautious about expanding because they are not sure if the crisis is coming. So the number of new jobs doesn't grow, but it is still pretty high. And there's another great thing. After big layoffs at Twitter, Amazon, Meta, and other tech giants, overall job cuts are decreasing. Many companies seem to find that balance between their staff numbers, costs, and profits. The optimism also spread to wages in 2024. Experts predicted an average increase of 4% this coming year. And who's popping up the champagne with the biggest raise? Energy sector workers, with a projected 4.5% hike and engineers with a 4.4% wage growth. Because you're watching our channel, chances are you are not just about that salary life. So what's 2024 got for investors? And by the way, for those who are thinking they're not ready to invest yet, there's no need to be a millionaire for that. Starting with just $15 to $30 is totally doable. See this video on the screen? And there you can learn how you can get into real estate with just $25. Don't miss it if you haven't seen it yet. Now, back to business. What's in store for the markets in this election year? Historically, stocks and bond markets don't feel too good in the year before a presidential election. So you can expect things to cool off a bit. Usually stock returns about 8.5%, but in the election years, they tend to go down and the average returns drop below 6%. But after the elections is when the stock market tends to grow. And this is not me who's saying that. That statement comes from the analysts who studied the American economy for the last 90 years. And what's interesting is that they found no clear link between which party wins and market performance. It's not about the party, but the event itself. When the leadership changes, the stocks go up. Usually when a new government comes, the market gains an average of 5%. So almost half of investors believe the 2024 elections will impact portfolios more than the market in general. But why does the stock market slows down during elections? One word, uncertainty. Elections often means that a new leader will choose a new economic course and the investors get unsure about the future. And because of that, they don't take too much risk. If a candidate looks solid, the market might react positively. But if investors have no clear expectations, the market response might not be so great until the elections are over. It's clear with stocks. But what about real estate? If you're thinking about buying a home during the election season, meaning this year, there will be an impact as well. Housing prices have been climbing steadily, but sometimes there's a notable hike in election years. Look at this example. These are home prices in Sacramento County since 2000, home values have risen each election year, with the exception of 2008 because of the crisis, which is kind of obvious. And another usual trend is that the mortgage rates often increase after the elections. But predicting this stuff is tricky. Economists can only analyze past trends and make guesses for the present and possibly the future. Another thing we'll definitely hear during the presidential campaigns is the subject around taxes. We always hear the president signing this and that bill, and those are billions, if not trillions of dollars. But who finances all that? Taxpayers, everyone from me and you to Bill Gates, Elon Musk, and every Republican and a Democrat. But each president sees taxes differently. Biden's team is pushing for higher taxes on the wealthy and big corporations. They try to ease the load for those with lower and average income. This is quite a contrast to the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act under Trump in 2017. That one favored big businesses and the super rich, cutting their corporate taxes. Biden's new tax law is supposed to shake things up in 2024. It's targeting the super rich, and supposedly it can cut their profits by over 16% while lower income earners can see a boost of more than 3% thanks to reduced taxes. But here's the twist. 
higher taxes mean more pressure on businesses. If we add last year inflation and the Fed's interest rate hikes, we can see more layoffs when the tax pressure is too big to handle. So what's the tax outcome in 2024 and after? Depends on who wins the election. So the only thing we can do is try and guess. But there is an even bigger question for next year. Price hikes and inflation. At the time of this episode recording, inflation is at 3.1%, way down from the 7% in 2021, but still twice as high compared to 2020. But the future seems bright. Economists predict an ongoing decline in inflation for 2024. Still, most likely, we won't reach the 2% goal. For now, the forecast is at 2.6%, but price stabilization is a bit more complicated. It is hard to find a quick fix. So the whole process can take more time. How do we know that? Check the Consumer Price Index, or CPI. It is over 307 now, which is already a bit more than expected. And next year, it might climb to at least 312. Translation, prices will continue to grow. But will the Fed keep raising interest rates? In the end, they're already at a 22-year peak. Experts see a 25% chance the Fed might even lower rates by May 2024. But it is still an open question. What's more precise is the expectation for GDP growth. Predictions indicate it will increase by 2% until the end of 2024. That's good news for the economy and all of us. Economists actually believe we can get that soft landing and even hit that 2% inflation target by 2025. Of course, not all promises get the fast track. Many are still a work in progress. Overall, the near future looks like a bit of a economic slowdown, but that's normal. The economy is all about cycles. For that soft landing out of high inflation to happen, we need to ease out slowly. And even though alarming messages are going around, the real numbers are not so bad for our economy. So whether it's an election year or not, there's no need for panic. What do you think about this election year? Let me know down in the comments and share this video with friends and family to help them be ready. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.